All right, guys. So today we're going to talk about audio and audio is one of those things I've been, uh, it's been eluding me or it's been tricking me into believing I've been getting better samples, better everything. Finally got the grip on it and I'm going to share my experience with you about that and not just that, but also tell you what you should be buying, what you shouldn't be buying and when you should be buying items to in improve the, your audio quality so it can be better. I'm going to just resample everything I've gathered and share that with you guys because as far as I can tell, you do not need anything in between. You just need to know what it is you're capturing into. Going from analog to digital is not as simple as A to B. There's more to it, and I really thought I had it all nailed down. Since most of you guys know about video, I'm going to relate audio to video in a way where it will make sense so you guys know exactly what it is you need to understand. The human ear can only hear 20 kilohertz at the most, so capturing analog audio and turning that into digital is the same thing as when you're capturing video on your camera. Your shutter speed is required to be double of what your frame rate is. So if you're shooting at 24, then you go to 48. If you go to 30, you go to 60. Everything you do is double and in audio is exactly the same thing. So the best thing for you to capture your audio is at 44 and that's your base of where you should be actually capturing anything you want to get the right amount of audio. If you're doing monologue video or podcast, 44 to 48 kilohertz of sample rate should be more than enough for you to capture in order to have good quality audio coming through. 32-bit flow will allow you to adjust your files. Anything that's been clipped, you can probably bring it back. Your capturing device is the biggest, biggest thing here. How well it samples things will allow you to bring that information down. So just because you can capture 32-bit float doesn't mean that you're able to like overexpose, overclip, whatever it is you think you're doing that you did wrong and bring it right back. It, there's also limitations as to how bad you capture something. Be careful. Always try to capture your audio just right and then just minor adjustments in the end. And as far as capturing 32-bit float audio, there's only a couple of manufacturers that are out there that are creating devices for this type of scenarios. And those are your sound devices, uh, Premix 3 and 6. Those are the low end. You're looking at about $900 and up. And the Zoom F6. The F6, for example, runs at about, I believe, um, $650. At $650 and up, you can start capturing 32-bit float. All those devices have a learning curve. So if you're looking to spend that amount of money, also be looking into spending a lot of time into learning how to use them. So when it comes to bit rate, for the last six months, I thought I had it nailed down. I thought I was capturing extremely great audio, but I wasn't. Anything your microphone goes through, that portion in between has to be able to capture that sample rate that you want, the bit rate that you want. Think of it as if it was video bit rate. You have 8-bit, 10-bit, 12-bit. You have your regular in-camera capture in 8-bit, then you have your log files in 10-bit, and then you have your ProRes or RAW files in 12-bit. If you want to record audio, you have to make sure that it, the in-between interface actually can handle the bit rate that you want to capture everything in. So just because you can record 32 bit doesn't mean that there's actually 32 bits coming in to the computer, the recording device, your interface and whatnot. It cannot upsample it whatsoever. So this laptop can only capture 16 bit of audio. My other computer can capture 24 bits of audio and that audio sounds way better than this one. Just like the interface I'm using right now, the Focusrite 2i2, this interface can pass through 24 bit of audio. And the sample rate is determined by me as to how high I want that to be. The only reason I actually figured out that I was not able to record 32 bit is because I actually clipped a lot of files last week's testing everything. And I realized that when I was bringing everything down, it was clipped. You get a flat line up on top, which means there was nothing captured beyond that. On a true 32 bit audio, you can bring it down and you can see all those spikes up and down of everything that you have lost. And when you have fake 32-bit audio float, like I did, everything has a straight line on top. As you can tell, everything beyond that was lost and everything towards the top is very, very distorted. That's how you know your interface is not true 32-bit float. So based upon how I've been capturing audio for the last six months, I would say that capturing audio directly onto my computer of 16 bits is more than enough. The only difference that I saw was when my shotgun was wireless and I would put the interface in between that, the wireless transmitter, that my audio will degrade on the other end. There seems to be, to be more deep end when I'm wired directly to the computer than when I'm actually wireless. So what I needed was an interface in between my computer and this. And for, for that to happen, I needed to go with Phantom Power. The DD, has an adapter that you can purchase is this one here right now. Uh, hope you guys can see it. This adapter here, 
goes into XLR and then the 3.5 connector goes here directly to the DD. And then take this 25 foot cable and route it any which way I want to straight to the interface and the quality of audio is extremely, extremely good. So based on that, go into your computer's audio interface and see exactly what your limits are. This one is locked at 16 and it will not go any higher. So the cool thing about this device is the fact that I can actually run the whole system through a USB-C. Bypassing that allows me to capture better audio and everything's all digital already. I actually like the fact that I can run longer cables. I can run this directly to the computer digitally via USB-C. So everything is digital now. My other computer can do 24 bits, but I'm pretty sure that this one can have better sample. Here are some samples of that. This is audio capture on the laptop at 16 bits, wired directly to the DD via a 3.5 cable. Sample audio has a small amount of ground noise reduction and the mic audio gain has been raised to 10. This is audio capture on the laptop at 24 bits, wired directly to the DD via the Scarlett 2 i 2 Sample audio has a small amount of ground noise reduction and the mic audio gain has been raised to 2. This is audio capture on the desktop at 24 bit, wired directly to the DD via 3.5 cable. Sample audio has a small amount of ground noise reduction and the mic audio gain has been raised to 10. So I hope you're wearing headphones for that. As you can see, the 24 bit audio from my computer and the 24 bit audio from this device here, the Focusrite, wasn't really uh, much of a difference. If it was music, I'm pretty sure there'll be a difference. At that point, most likely the Focusrite will, ta uh, will take off and do a much better job based upon the fact that it's meant to do those kind of scenarios. Let me go over some features here, just in case you guys are interested. It's got some pretty cool features that I would say it's uh, useful to everybody. And the fact is that it's got its own gains. So on your own microphone, you don't really need to adjust the gain to get better audio. You can do all of that through here and get the proper audio that you require. You got your gains. You also have an instrument in and something called air to give you better audio out of the human voice. So if you want to use that, it's, it's kind of like adding a little bit of a reverb. It just gives you better mids, I believe. It also has a second input, so you can have dual channel. And the same things again, you have your instrument and your air and the ability for you to go uh, pass through phantom and when you don't want to you can just take it off if you, the, the thing does not require it so phantom power works really good here and the other thing that you have here is also your monitor you can pass through the audio from your microphones through your computer routes right back you get 24 bits of audio out of this device here plus you have two lines out out of the back you have left and right audio outputs that you can actually use analog. So that's a Focusrite 2A2 that allows you to extend your range of your microphone and go beyond what your limits can allow you to do. Now I can do more, go a longer distance with my cables and still capture better audio. So I hope you guys learned something because I did. See ya.